this wild caught smoked salmon with cracked pepper and garlic from Whole Foods and I've been really loving avocado cream cheese on this bread that I started eating again I was actually introduced to this bread by my sister like years ago but I don't know why I stopped it just tastes like a good hearty bread that doesn't stick to the roof of your mouth if you know what I mean it lasts a long time you just pop it in the freezer I'm not ruling out white bread forever I'm just this is what I've been on. It's so easy, just pop it in the toaster. Which by the way, I'm kind of sad that I put away my Smeg toaster, it's so beautiful. But the Our Place Wonder Oven just kind of does it all. I'm still trying to figure out my kitchen setup. I also picked up this Good Culture Probiotic Cream Cheese Spread. It says ridiculously good. It's just that, it's ridiculously good. Give it a try. I've just been really into my probiotics lately. I'm trying to feed my, my little gut microbiome and make it happy when at home. When I travel, it's a different story. After I did my morning routine today, I spent too long rearranging my bedroom, cleaned the house a little bit, and I randomly clicked on a Rotten Mango podcast, which is by Stephanie Sue. And I'm usually never into true crime, but the way that she does her storytelling and how she ties it up with lessons that are essentially bigger than the story, it's so compelling. I'm on the second episode, and they're pretty long episodes, but I definitely can't listen to this like 24-7. Mmm, what the heck, that is so good. I should have toasted two pieces of bread, but let's see how I feel after one toast. Actually, I might skip out on the pepper because the salmon has it. I got a notification from my vocabulary app, and today's word is obsequious. It's an adjective, excessively compliant or submissive. Obsequious. I love this vocabulary app, but can you imagine me like trying to throw an obsequious while I'm like talking to you or like my friends? I would feel so annoying but it's good to know it's good to know i kind of want some tomatoes tomatoes baby baby when you kiss me like this but it's all coming back to me This is the new placement of my Noguchi lamps. This awkward nook turned into an art installation, so I'm so happy about that. I temporarily have the low Herman Miller table as my nightstand. I personally don't want to use it for this, so I bought a side table from Hay, and it just came yesterday, but I'm like so done with doing house things today. Did a lot of cleaning. The tomatoes make it look so ugly. I don't know if I want, I don't know if I want them on there anymore. You know what? We're just gonna go with it. Fuck it. Kinda want an egg. Slow down, Tammy. One thing at a time. Slow down. Grab the wall. Wiggle like each other and make your ass fall off. Ta-da! All coming back to me. Now. She's cute. Yeah! Lunch with a cup of jasmine green tea. Iced. Salmon. If you guys see it at Whole Foods, try it out. Mm, 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 mm. On my walk this morning, I started listening to Matthew McConaughey's 
book called Green Lights. The way that I was hooked, it was like he was right there by my side telling me his story. I'm only like three or four chapters in where he starts talking about his dad. I used to dismiss the idea of reading autobiographies a lot or biographies. It's so, so important to hear other people's stories and how they tell it. So it's such a treat to hear Matthew McConaughey be his own person as he's telling the words that he wrote about his experiences. There's a lot to learn from and it doesn't have to just be you sitting down listening to somebody. It's very productive if that's something that you're concerned with when reading. I'm still trying to work on it as I dip my toes deeper into reading fiction, but autobiographies are such a great way to start because you're given these gems that this person who you may look up to has decided to share with you. So far, so good. I'm gonna finish this episode from the Rotten Mango podcast then no more true crime for me today. I really don't want to go into this realm. But Stephanie Sue, she has talent. And not be identified. So this little cat and mouse game begins. And as of right now, it's not entirely there in Vietnam. And I, I'm sure that this was... Yay. Okay. What did I order from Amazon this time? By the way, I always have my Amazon favorites listed down in the description in case you guys are curious about my Amazon findings. I've actually found some of my Kinto ceramics on Amazon for cheaper and they ship a lot faster than the Kinto website sometimes. So, you never know. Where's my box cutter? Box cutter! Got it. Do you guys like unboxing videos? I'm not gonna lie, they're probably one of my guilty pleasures. There's just something so satisfying. Oh yay. Got my glucose revolution book. I'm starting to learn more about sugar. My crutch. My toxic love. Sugar. I've been on this journey this past summer since I started experiencing a lot of a lot of shifts in my bloating, my mood swings, overall energy levels throughout the day. Like I used to normalize midday crashes because other people were experiencing it too. I was like, oh, it's, it's normal, I guess. We just gotta push through it. To an extent, yes, depending on how much work you're putting in in the morning, but I think it had a lot to do with how much I was indulging in glucose, glucose or sugar. Anything ending in os, fructose, sucrose, all of that. Sugar is our body's first line of energy that it takes from, and it's addicting for many reasons. Again, I'm very new to this, but I want to educate myself and empower myself with knowledge. It's tricky because y'all know I love my sweets, and I'm still gonna eat them just in moderation, or at least that's how I'm feeling right now. We'll see how I feel in like two years from now, but um, yeah, I'm just living and learning. I get really afraid of talking about health stuff just because I think when somebody starts making a life change, I think it's easy to start attaching that to their identity as opposed to I'm just learning and I'm just being curious right now and we'll see how that information applies and what works best for my individual lifestyle. Everybody's got to figure out their own rhythm but I gotta tell you, I've been lessening my sugar intake for the past month and a half or so, just because I used to have it so often. I felt sort of reborn, physically, mentally. I did not know how much sugar was affecting my mental fog. Okay, I'm going off on a tangent. This is an unboxing. <gasps> so excited about this one. So this coincides with this book. It's Jessie's recipe book, Guide to Cutting Cravings, Getting Your Energy Back and Feeling Amazing. She talks big about having a savory breakfast and I need to practice that. For a minute, I was having too many donuts in the morning. Savory breakfast vinegar to kind of coat your stomach and stop crazy insulin spikes. She's so cute. Talented tomatoes. I love her. Look her up. Let me know if you guys are even interested in this stuff. Life change is always hard, especially if I'm like so comfortable with how I'm already eating or like I'm so used to it. Who knows? I'm going to Disneyland next week and I know I'm having a churro. The hypocrisy. Oh, this is my laundry detergent. Y'all, I have a fucking cup obsession. I wanted a small tumbler for my hot drinks because I guess I'm now into hot coffee. This is from Simple Modern. I ordered their 20 ounce tumbler and I fell in love with it with how cold it kept my drinks and how sleek it looks. Look at it, it's so cute. I mean, it's just a cup. Is this a flip top? Is it? Yeah, it is a flip top. Oh, very sturdy. I literally just have like this much coffee and I'm good to go. My cup obsession. I'll show you. And they're all black. I should have ordered a green one, but it's okay. 
in keeping with the theme. What's wrong with me? Do I need all these cups? I do actually. <laughs> they all serve a purpose and I'll tell you right now. So this is my water drop water bottle. This is for like when I'm working out. And then this one is Simple Modern. This cup's purpose is for my apple cider vinegar water mixed with electrolytes. I be having electrolytes a lot because I sweat so much. For my iced teas, I have pretty large iced teas because I like to dilute it. Or a smoothie that goes into here. It stays cold. They're all insulated. And then this one's gonna be for my coffees and hot teas. See, they're all effective. I'll be carrying all three of these around with me. The crazy cup lady, that's me. I've heard so much about Athletic Greens, not sponsored or anything. I'll let y'all know if it does anything for me. You're going to need a smaller cabinet because right now my cabinet is full of supplements. I have a crazy amount of pills that I take every morning because my supplements are tailored to my needs. Like I take cod liver oil, I take my probiotic prebiotics, I take L-tyrosine, turmeric, but they make me feel amazing. Like I can tell a difference when I don't take them. But I'll say this, my body doesn't rely on them. I did a test week where I didn't take any supplements. I felt the differences, but I didn't necessarily need them. My life just feels better with them. Is it placebo? Is it? Actually, it's not, because I've taken, I've taken like tests and stuff. I've been so, y'all, the way that I've been like trying to do all of this, some may say it's aggressive, but it's been so fun. Okay, AG1. AG1 is daily nutrition made powerfully simple. I like simple. Simple modern. Simple modern cup. Andrew Huberman says that he puts his mom on this, so I might want to get my mom on this too. I just really want to start watching out for her sugar intake to help any early signs of Alzheimer's and stuff, you know? Man, I feel like I'm really growing up. It just hit me. I've never thought to look out for my mom's health like that. If anything, when I was younger, I would like try to buy her boba and like snacks all the time. And once in a while it's completely fine, but I think the way that I was looking at it was me trying to give her some sort of happiness. And I just don't think that that it's completely my love language anymore and I feel like it might be like looking out for her health a balance a balance moderation is really what I'm trying to learn and what helps me with learning about moderation and discipline is educating myself I hope that makes sense I feel like I'm trying to explain myself too much I'm just gonna shut up she's so green I love green green makes me happy green I feel like is my aura color so she comes in a little package like this. The number one thing that caught my eye about Athletic Greens versus other supplements is that the vitamin B12 in here is not the synthetic kind. This is usually the synthetic vitamin B12 that you get in lots of multivitamin gummies and things of that sort. So it's really important to see what kind of vitamins you're getting and what versions of them they are. So I have individual packets. I really hope it doesn't taste like I took a handful of grass from outside and decided to juice it. That's the worst. I've had juices like that before, can't do that. Like wheatgrass shots, a shot I can do, but a whole drink, no. Y'all, we got another water bottle. We got the AG1 water bottle, it's so cute. I love the chrome steel top, it feels very heavy duty. We have a scoop, we have the tin can it comes in. Should I just pour it in now? It smells kind of like matcha. I don't know why I'm doing this on my white carpet. We're being super risky right now. Oops, I didn't think this through. Sorry. <laughs> Clean up on aisle five. <coughs> I also got the D3 and K2 liquid dietary supplement. It's this tincture. You can just drop this on your tongue. How much water do I put? There's prebiotics and probiotics in it. They're promising a lot in this powder. Eight to 10 ounces of cold water. Beer. Okay, I have my water and I'm gonna do one scoop. It says make AG1 your own. Most members love the taste of AG1 with just cold water, but there are plenty of ways you can prepare AG1. Try using more or less water, adding a squeeze of lemon, a splash of pure fruit juice, or adding it to your favorite smoothie. Cheers. Hmm. It tastes like a pineapple vanilla drink that's powdery. I don't think I mixed it up enough. It definitely tastes like a health drink, but it's not, it's not unpleasant. Yeah, you still taste the powder, but I mean, it's a supplement drink, so I'm not expecting it to taste like a Jamba Juice smoothie. Why do dogs have the cutest stink? Okay, I just signed up for a yoga class in like 30 minutes, so 
think I want to do my hair in little braids because I can't lay down on my back with a bun. I don't want a high bun. I don't know if anybody else gets headaches from having their hair up all day. Even if it wasn't even a tight bun, I could put it in a bun. That song always gets in my head when I say bun. I'm telling you, ever since I started mixing up my workout routines with low intensity and high intensity, varying it throughout my week, it's amazing. I used to be so hard on myself on the treadmill. If I didn't run like five miles a day, then I considered myself a failure. <sighs> Little did I know I was creating so much stress on myself. It was a vicious cycle. And my battery's about to die. Vietnamese dish tonight. It's called soup nui ga, but I'm making a what I eat in a week video, so you'll see the recipe there. But I don't think they have the rice macaroni I'm looking for, so I'm just gonna use regular wheat. These look cool too. Curveballs. little snack before I drive home. These are the sea salt and pepper pork rinds by Epic. The sea salt and vinegar one is really good too. Mmm. I really hope that the pasta shells that I bought are gonna be good because they're made from chickpeas. Tonight we're working with some daikon, radish daikon, and onion, organic carrots, cilantro, and some chicken thighs. I can't believe I found it. I can't believe I found it on Facebook Marketplace. Y'all, I got my dream bookshelf. Probably not as exciting to most people, but it is so exciting to me and I'm about to build it right now. I think I'm gonna put it maybe in this corner. I'm trying to make like the perfect reading nook. It's right next to the window where the sun sets. It's where my bed is. I like to read before I go to bed, so it might work. Let's see. The person who previously owned this said that building is super easy. I don't know. I don't have a manual, so I'm gonna wing it. These are so heavy. Hey! organizing my books. At first I was gonna wrap all of them, but there's a big part of me that feels like a person's personality shines through their book collection. It could also just be me being super lazy and I don't wanna wrap all these books right now. So I'm gonna leave them as is and respect the covers. But I'm trying to figure out how to organize them. I was thinking alphabetically or color coordinated, like red, orange, yellow, green, blue. But in terms of practicality, I think I would normally look for a book depending on what I'm interested in reading, like its category. So I'm gonna organize them categorically, except for the very bottom shelf, which is the bigger shelf. Those will just hold the bigger books. It'll be a little odd section. So for example, I'll have a section that's acting books, right? And then I'll have a section about health stuff. I think that'll work. And then we have poetry, self-help, fiction. Mm -hmm. 